Today we're going to start um, the third day of review for our Keystone Algebra 1 exam. And we're moving on to Module 2 today. And we'll spend two days or two different lessons on Module 2. We have Clara and she opens a bank account with some money. After opening the account, she deposits the same amount of money each week. She does not withdraw any money from the account. The list below shows how much money Clara has in her bank account at the end of each of the first four weeks. The pattern continues, which, expressions, which expression represents how much money in dollars Clara has in her bank account at the end of N weeks. So, we see that when Clara begins this account, she must start out with $214 then it's always a good idea to look at the difference between the first entry and the next entry. So we have $228 after the first full week. And if we subtract that from the amount she originally deposits, that gives us $14. Let's check and see if between the next two weeks, this is also $14. And then we know we have this constant rate of change. And they told us it's the same amount, but we're just going to check. So it's 242 minus 228, and that also gives us 14. So she is depositing $14 every time. And she starts with this $214. So in other words, she is going to take 214 and add $14 every week. And N is going to represent the number of weeks. Now, if you put in 1 for your first N, you should get that 228. And then if you put in 2 for your second N, 242, and if you put in three for your third N, you're going to get 256. This first one has to be zero, so that way you get that initial deposit of $214. So we're looking at answer choice B for this question. For problem number two, we have Erica, and each week she's gonna measure the height of a plant she is growing. The table below shows her measurements. So we can see we have Eric's plants and week one, two, three, four, five through six, and then the height in centimeters is three, four, five, seven, 10, and 11. And we are asked, what does the domain of this relation represent? So the domain is the first values or the X values or the first column of the table. So we can see at the top of the table, we're talking about the number of weeks. So this one represents one week, etc. So the domain is represented by weeks. So let's look through our answer choices. So the first one is the heights and centimeters of the plant. That's not right. The rate, that's not right. The number of weeks during which Erica recorded the heights of the plant that one seems like the right one, so let's go ahead and make C our answer choice for number two. Moving on, we have a swimming pool, and it's going to hold 30,000 gallons of water. The graph below represents the amount of water in gallons in the swimming pool as the swimming pool is being drained. And we can see that the x-axis is represented by time in terms of minutes, and the y-axis is being represented by the water in thousands of gallons. And then we have this graph. How much time in minutes does it take for the swimming pool to be completely drained? So if the swimming pool has been completely drained, that means that the water level has to get to zero. So zero would be the x-axis. So if we extend this x-axis out and we just sort of approximate this line continuing on, 
this point here is what we're looking for. And we don't have the rest of the table, so we're going to have to do um, some guesstimating to estimate the answer. And we're going to show you exactly how to get the answer. So um, first, it can't be 100 because we're past 150, so we can eliminate this as our answer choice. And if I look at this, from here to here is 150, and it looks like this is the same distance as well. So I'm guessing it's going to be 300. It's certainly not going to be 900 or 1,000, but let's show you how you get the exact answer. So what we're looking for is we're looking for the, the uh, x-intercept of this function, but we don't have the function, we only have the graph. So we would have to write the function. So if we look at this point up here, this is the y-intercept here. So the y-intercept is at 30. So we know using slope-intercept form, y is equal to mx plus b. And that plus b has to be 30. Now we need the slope. So to find the slope, we're going to do rise over run. So this is a really good looking point here, and this is a really good looking point here. And if we look and we draw that reference triangle, that's our reference triangle. So what's our rise and what's our run? So if you look, this is at 24 and this is at 18, and the difference between the two is six, and we're moving down. So the rise is negative six. So negative six over the run. Now, if you'll notice, this is um, 60 all the way over here to 120. So the difference between them is 60. So the run is 60. And if we reduce that down, we get negative one over 10. So moving through this problem, we now know that y is equal to negative 1 over 10x plus 30. So we're going to solve this equation letting y, the height or the, uh, the number of gallons of water, be 0 because that's when the pool would be drained. So we have negative 1 over 10x plus 30. If we subtract 30 from both sides, that gives us negative 30 equals negative 1 tenth x. And then if we multiply both sides by a negative 10, that would give us negative 10 times negative 30, which is equal to x, which is 300 minutes. So the pool would be drained in 300 minutes. This is how you do it algebraically, but this is an example where don't give up on the question just because maybe you've forgotten about all this stuff. You can guesstimate approximately what the value is going to be and make a good educated guess. Let's look at problem number four. <clears throat> so we have a function x and it's graphed on the coordinate plane shown below. Which equation describes the function of x? <coughs> So what we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing we just did in the previous problem, but now we are actually going to have to find the equation. So this point right here, again, is our y-intercept. So our y-intercept is 3. So we do know, if we're looking at our answer choices, that we can eliminate 4 and 4 for our y-intercept. So those are being eliminated because they don't have the right um, y-intercept. Now we just have to find another point and figure out the slope. So this is another nice clean point, so we'll use that. And we look at our rise over our run. So drawing our reference triangle here, we can see that our rise is negative 3 and our run is 4. So it should be negative 3 over 4 for our slope. So our answer choice should be A. <coughs> Let's move on to question number five. So for question number five, it says Dana reads a certain book at an average rate of two pages every three minutes. 
So we can draw ourselves a picture here. Here's page one, here's page two, and she can read these two pages in three minutes. The fourth chapter of the book has 28 pages. Based on his average rate, and I thought Dana, uh, yeah, Dana will take, how long will it take to read the fourth chapter of the book? So what we want to do is figure out how many two page, uh, two sets of two pages are in 28. So we're just going to take 28 and divide it by two. This leads us to 14. So that means that we need to multiply this 14 by the 3, and that's going to give us 42. So it would take them, or him, approximately 42 minutes in order to read 28 pages. Okay, let's look at the next problem. So number six, Marty is exercising and after exercising, his heart rate is 168 beats per minute. So this individual has been exercising and the heart rate is 168 beats per minute. His heart rate is decreasing now at a constant rate of four beats per minute until it reaches his resting heart rate. So basically, it's going to decrease by four beats a minute. So if we subtract four from this, that's one minute worth of time. So after one minute, it's 164 beats per minute. And after another minute, it's 160 beats per minute. And we're going to go all the way down here until we reach the resting heart rate. It says Marty's resting heart rate is 72 beats per minute. We want to know how many minutes after exercising will it be until Marty's heart rate returns to its rest to his resting heart rate. So one thing we could do with this is we could figure out just by subtracting 4 how many times we do that until we get to 72. But it's probably quicker and again, you, you, you have unlimited time on this test. So if you have to do that, take the time and do it. So what we're going to do is we're going to take 168 minus 72 and figure out how many beats per minute we need to go through. So that would be 96 beats per minute. And we know these are broken up into increments of 4 per minute. So we're just going to take 96 and divide that by 4. And that gives us 24 minutes. So it's going to take 24 minutes to reach the resting heart rate. And again, you could just literally go through and subtract 4 until you get to 72. You're allowed to use a calculator. Question number 7. <clears throat> we have a graph of a linear function, and it has a slope of negative 1 fourth and contains the point 812. What's the equation of the line? So this is pretty straightforward. So in Algebra 1, we teach you to use point slope form in order to write the equation of a line. So that's y minus y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. And we're going to fill in our blanks using the point, which is in terms of x and y, and our slope, which is negative 1 over 4. So we're going to do y minus 12 equals our slope, which is negative 1 fourth, times x minus 8. And then we just have to simplify this to find the equation of the line. So we get y minus 12 is equal to, and we're going to distribute the negative 1 fourth to x and to negative 8. So negative 1 fourth times x is negative 1 fourth x, and then a negative 1 fourth times a negative 8 is a positive 2. And then we're simply going to add the 12 to both sides to get y by itself. 
and we're at the point where we should have our answer, which is negative 1 fourth x plus 2 plus 12, which is 14. And that is answer choice D. Let's move on to our last question for our review today. So it says, a satellite is traveling in an orbit around Earth. Its altitude begins to decrease at a constant rate until the satellite re-enters Earth's atmosphere. The equation shown below can be used to determine the satellite's altitude, or y. So y is the altitude, <clears throat> and that's in kilometers. And x is months after its altitude has begun to de began to decrease. And then we're given this equation. y is equal to 17,600 minus 23x. So which statement about the satellite is true? It says in A, the satellite was at an altitude of 17,600 kilometers before its altitude began to decrease. And that's actually true because time zero, so x equals zero, is the y-intercept. And the y-intercept then would be this 17,600. And if we look at the other ones, it says the satellite will re-enter Earth's atmosphere 23 months later. We don't even know when that is, so that's definitely out. The satellite was traveling at a rate. Now, we weren't talking about rates, we were talking about altitude. And the satellite has been slowing down at a rate of 23 kilometers per hour since its altitude began to decrease. And nope, it's, that's months. The 23 represents months. So our answer is answer choice A. Okay, so that's it for our review today. We're going to do our final review tomorrow.